Good morning and welcome to Office Vlog 05. And today I'm starting to feel kind of stuck here and I want to make some really big progress. So I'm at the storage unit and I want to feel like I really moved a lot of stuff today. So I'm going to start setting myself some ground rules for things I need to accomplish here and in a particular order. So all the furniture that's in the storage unit for the, the small one needs to be moved to the big one. And that absolutely must happen. I'm also not going to let myself get internet at the office until this storage unit, the small one, is completely empty because like I mentioned in one of the previous vlogs, that's going to pay for internet. And well, it's actually a lot more than the internet's going to be. Uh, but I don't want to have a redundant bill and really I shouldn't be at the office using internet when I need to be emptying this thing. So that's going to be something that I'm setting for myself as a goal or, you know, a reward type thing. Um, then there are some other things that I need to shuffle around. Like at home, uh, I think I have some more computer stuff that realistically needs to go to the office. So I need to move that stuff. And in its place, I'm gonna move all of the video game console stuff that really shouldn't be in the storage units to begin with, but I may have to bring them back here. I don't know yet, but I'm thinking taking those home to get myself some working room would be a good idea because I can. Um, so I really need to start thinking about where stuff's going long-term here. Um, and it's just kind of frustrating and difficult. But uh, I'm going to get started now by moving a lot of stuff into a lot of different places here. And then we'll check back in once this is no longer empty and see what's going where. I think I don't want to try and take anything home today, or at least in the morning. Maybe I'll do that in the afternoon on my way back. But uh, yeah, I need to make some real progress here. All right, done. That was a very heavy load. Uh, that shelf there is full of CDs and I lifted it full and then put a strap around it so they can't fall out. Uh, we got milk crates full of CDs. That's a box full of manuals and it's going to be really cool. We're going to put that on the bookshelf. It's going to be sweet. Um, we got more heavy stuff down here. This was this is a very, very heavy load. <laughs> um, I didn't realize there's all the heavy stuff right up front. But yeah, it was. Um, couch. It's taken care of, so there's that. Um, wasn't able to get the rest of the furniture out of the way, but I can see one of the two CRT shelves and uh, the server rack now. I kind of forgot that's that's got to go up into the office. <laughs> that's going to be fun. I'm going to see just how much I can disassemble it. Um, when I get to that, I'll talk about why, because I've never lifted it. <laughs> so, yay. But, uh, yeah, now I'm going to go stop by post office and then head to my office and start unloading and organizing although a lot of this is just going into the storage room and then just being left there because i don't have shelves in yet so uh yeah come on man all right uh, let's uh see what's going on here because it started through that and it's running very very rough P2241 O2 sensors. Um, one of those was near the cooling stuff, so it's possible that I bumped it and maybe it's loose. Um, I don't know. It's going to be real hot in there now, so I don't want to have to touch the cats. Uh, but that's not like an immediate issue, so I can actually drive this to the office still and then deal with that when I get out or once it's cooled down a bit. So yeah, I'm just going to keep going. Okay, so that is the O2 sensor right there. And off in right there, those wires are the uh, connector for it. Um, and I realized I can actually get to those without having to touch the O2 sensor because realistically, uh, there's nothing I can do there. So I was just going to reach under here, try pushing on that to see how it goes um hopefully uh, it's a, it could be that these cables down in here actually uh got pushed around a bit uh with all the stuff and even the actual sensor itself is right next to the hose that broke so it's possible that while repairing it it got roughed up uh but you know hopefully just nudging the connector there fixes it but yeah it wasn't running right i'm really hoping it's not an ignition coil but it could be there's three right here that are very easy to get to. I don't even know where the other ones are because it's the V is this way and uh, well, yeah, that's that's really far back there. And I did look it up while I was waiting in line. It is that side, so it's that O2 sensor. So 
yeah, uh, I may have to buy one of those, but at least, it, I mean, I really couldn't ask for that to be any easier. I don't even have to get under the car, so pff, it won't be a problem. I mean, they're not a cheap. I think they're like 80 bucks or something. I don't know. I haven't looked for them on this, but eh, oh well. Okay, at the office, and uh, we're going to get started here in a little bit. First thing, though, I want to open up uh, mail that was sent. Uh, I'd mentioned in the last video that I put together an Amazon Wish list was either the last video, the one before that, and some of you were really awesome and actually got some of the stuff off of there for me. So uh, I'm just going to open that in these office videos rather than wait for a mail video because there's there's no names on there and it's only going to show me who it was if you put a gift receipt in there and I don't know if you're going to have done that. So uh, I'm going to do that and really these are all things that are going to be directly used in the office vlog. So it kind of just makes sense to use them in these. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Um, so. Let's go ahead and open up what's there right now. It's kind of nice. I don't have to prep these as much since the worst thing I'm going to do is dox my P.O. box. So uh, I can just find out some stuff here. Uh, oh, okay. So awesome. Uh, there are some gift things. Um, okay. Thank you, Patrick. Um, all right. So these are, okay. These are audio cables that are going to be used with the uh, VJ Extron I showed, and I think actually uh, this should be open with this. I bet this goes to here. Yes. Okay. So these are the terminal blocks. Actually, let me just go grab it really quick. Okay. This is the Extron. All right. These terminal blocks plug into the audio input ports. Oh, that's awesome. And then these are 3.5 millimeter to bare wire audio cables. And then I can plug these into here and get audio into this that it can switch as well. So those are going to be super duper handy. Uh, thank you so much. Um, that's excellent. And then these are the uh, parallel port cables that I was talking about when I mentioned the Amazon wish list to simplify my hard copy printout. So that is going to be immensely helpful. Um, unfortunately, another month slipped by before I was able to get that done, but uh, now it's gonna be even easier. So uh, yeah, um, all right. Thank you so much again, Patrick. Uh, I'm pretty sure Patrick also sent the, uh, yeah, he sent the other one as well. Uh, got the gift receipt. Okay, uh, I think that was everything I knew of, so I don't know what these are gonna be. Uh, let's see here, open it from underneath. Um, oh man, okay, uh, this is a downside to Amazon wish lists. Uh, I don't, <laughs> things don't get marked as sent. Um, dang it, okay, so these will still be useful because the other, well, okay, um, thank you so much, whomever sent this one. Um, okay, so I now have more of these. I can definitely use these. I think I have some other stuff that takes these as well. So these won't go to waste. Um, it was just specifically for this, but okay, that's, thank you. Um, I definitely need to figure out how to mark things or figure out how to know when things are done. Okay. This is my first time doing an Amazon wish list publicly. Um, so, okay. I, I, I got to figure that out, but thank you. Whoever sent this one as well, um, because that's going to be super helpful. Okay. This one I need the knife for. You have got to be kidding me. How how did this happen? Okay. Um Well, this is all right. I can't actually use all of these honestly. <laughs> if there's one thing I can use a lot of it's parallel port adapters. Thank you again. Um I'm definitely I know I'm pretty sure I removed those. Let me, uh, I'll have to do, do it with my phone. But um, again, thank you to whoever sent these. Uh, I wasn't expecting double of both of those. So, all right, thank you. Um, I need to figure out how to check things on Amazon wishlist to make sure that they're not accidentally uh, duplicated. So, okay. Uh, I will do that like immediately, actually, because I want to make sure that um, if someone helps, that uh, they help in the way that they're thinking. But uh, again, thank you to those who did help here. Everything uh, is actually useful in almost any quantity. So again, thank you.
Okay, I just looked on Amazon and that was completely my fault. Um, there was apparently a setting to not remove or remove items that have been purchased and I had it set to not remove them and I didn't realize that. So that was on me. It was a pure coincidence that two people decided to pick the exact same things. Um, so yeah, I do know who the two people are and I want to apologize to Patrick and Michael for not having that so that you both ended up getting the same things. Um, both of them, both sets will actually be useful to me. Um, but if you want to change something, just let me know, get in touch. Um, and, uh, I can take care of that. But, uh, yeah, so that's my bad. I have fixed that, taken care of it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so uh, the list is now updated and it updates automatically. So, yeah. Okay. Um, now let's get on to stuff. I have, oh, since brought everything in, um, this I brought in, this was visible, um, in my hi-fi episode, um, talking about that stuff. Um, so this is actually a CD shelf. Um, pro tip, don't carry one of these when it's full. I did. It hurt a lot. Ow. <laughs> um, I regret doing that. That was way too much weight. Uh, so I have some more stuff here. So, um, I brought one spool. So this is kind of interesting for the Extron. Um, <clears throat> on the VGA stuff, uh, that Extron also has, uh, lumin luminance and chrominance. This is a spool of S video cable. So if I get BNC ends, I can actually make my own BNC cables to use with that. So that's cool. Got that out of a trash can at a storage unit complex. That wasn't mine. <laughs> um, so that's something, uh, let's see off this way. I did bring in some more stuff. This, this is really cool. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, let's see, I have actual keyboards in here now also. For everyone who keeps telling me that that Microsoft Comfort 4000 keyboard is really good, this is a really good comfort keyboard that's wireless by Microsoft. Um, they made a lot better keyboards than the other one, and that one's even low profile, and it's more enjoyable to use. Um, oh, <laughs> I just noticed something. What is wrong with these monsters? We have F1 through 4, then F5 through F10, and then F11 and F12. What is wrong with you, Microsoft? Just group them in fours. Wow. How have I never noticed that before? That's awful. But yeah, this has a bunch of stuff. Like, there's my uh, Apple keyboards. This one's really cool. Ergonomic X. No, AT keyboard. I think it has an XT switch, actually. Um... Somewhere, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that, that one's really cool. I've used that one on my 46. Uh, a bunch of stuff. Here's uh, something cool. I do have to be careful not to uh, show the address label here. Ah, but this is a 3M master case of high density floppy disks that I didn't really mean to get, but just kind of happened one day. So that's funny. Uh, but yeah, getting stuff old. There's something else really cool here that I found out that I have that I completely forgot. I'm pretty sure I know who gave it to me, but uh, this would have been cool for the XT video. It's a Doom 3 poster. I forgot about that, so that's really cool. Um, but yeah, a bunch of stuff uh, that got pulled in here. Um, this. Oh, man. This is really cool. Uh, so this is over here with the software stuff because it is software, but the majority of this is actually Keras80 software, and I mean all of one. So there are a lot of uh, things in here, actually. These, oh no, those do go here. Uh, there, there's just there's a bunch. Um, <laughs> so okay, I guess there are some books in there. There shouldn't have been. It should be mostly software. So <clears throat> I got this all. You know what? These are just discs. That's right. There, so there's a lot of discs that are written in here with software and other things. Um, it's been a little while since I got this. So I got these during the move. Actually, at the same place I got the uh, <clears throat> leader, um, uh, what you call it, NTSC pattern generator and the magazines for popular mechanics. No, not mechanics, electronics. I keep calling it mechanics. <laughs> I had to re-record multiple times. Um, I'm just moving some other stuff out of the way here because of a really cool box I have here. Ugh. So <clears throat> this is something that's going on the shelf today. And this is probably gonna be today's major objective here. Um, 
Oh, did I use that to, yeah, I used a box to protect this stuff. Um, so all of these, okay, are manuals for TRS-80 products and other things. Um, <clears throat> this is super cool. These are some actual TRS-80 computer catalogs. There's not that many in there, but those are really awesome. So that kind of thing is just going right on the bookshelf right there. But um, we have manuals for a lot of really interesting hardware here. Like, let me just pull out a big one at random here. This is a Terra Model 2 manual. Look at that, Tristos, eight inch floppy. All of the hardware was gone by the time I got to here. So this was kind of an estate sale. Um, and someone had picked over all of the hardware already, but they left behind all of the documentation. So I bought everything, absolutely every single thing um, that had anything to do with computer software. So uh, I have a lot of stuff in here. Um, not all of it is stuff that I can actually use. Um, so like this is an account payable system for model one or two or something in there. Yeah, so that's, oh, yay, yay, <laughs> you know, that's exciting, but I bought all of it, uh, just because I wasn't going to leave this to chance that it was going to get chucked or anything like that, but there is a whole bunch of really cool Model 2 scripts it. Uh, there's more than Model 2 stuff in here. Um, I know there's Model 1 manual in here somewhere. Um, software library for more, more scripts it. Okay, I think I was Model 4, actually. Um, software library. Model 4. They do have a Model 4 now, so there's that. Um, come on, I know there's Model 1 stuff in here. Uh, Model 1, 3 software library. Okay, so uh, here we have more scripts it. <laughs> more scripts it. Um, super scripts it. Okay, but there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, one of the things that's in here, let's see if I can find this. I think I put it in this part. Um, ah, okay. Okay, it was over here. Uh, there's two really awesome things. Um, so one is this, okay? So uh, instant software, the flying circuits for model one. Oh yeah, for model one, okay, level two. Now, this is how this was sold in a bag like this, all right? Um, I've never bought any software that came in a bag before, but I know anything that I see like this to get. So this is dated 1980 there at the bottom. That's fairly early. Um, Model 1 was obviously uh, 1977. I don't remember when the Model 3 came out. I want to say 81, but I'm probably wrong. Um, but that's really cool. <laughs> However, this is even cooler. I'm not going to show the other side because, well, if I do this, I can do it like this. Yeah, so it has the address of the person who originally bought it on it because this came from the software publisher. But this thing is, this is so cool. This is a TRS-80 Model 3 emulator for DOS, for MS-DOS, that is a commercial release that was purchased by the person who was doing this, who was using all of this TRS-80 hardware. And it is, in fact, in here. And that is so cool. Um, so that's something that I, oh, there's a receipt. I didn't even see that. It was $109. Oh, oh no, addresses. I don't want to dox them. Um, <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, so yeah, that, um, there was a lot of really awesome stuff. And here's a shame I couldn't get the hardware, um, but I got as much as I could. Uh, I really badly wanted to do a video on all this stuff when I got it because, I mean, it was so awesome. But I was in the middle of moving and I just couldn't. Um, there's actually even more um, from this. This is now finally all here. Um, in here somewhere, I believe. No. Uh, has it not made it here yet? I don't know if it has. Okay, I know where it is. Um, there is a bunch of PC software that came as well, um, and that was uh, put in storage, and I know where it is in storage, actually. You know, I'm playing back in my head where everything went. Um, it's in storage, and it'll go uh, here when I bring those uh, shelves in. Yeah, there is oh, so much stuff. There are so many discs. So this person, ah, come on, balance. They not only, like, they had a lot of actual commercial software. And there, there is commercial software in here, but they also made backups. And then also there are, like, 
BBS listings <laughs> uh, programs that were, let's say, alternatively acquired. Uh, very obviously, <laughs> um, yeah, like uh, yeah, that, that that looks legit. Actually, that looks like a backup. I'm pretty sure Netware uh, was in there and is in the PCs off the box. But uh, there's a bunch of stuff. VGA TV program disc. I don't I don't know what that is. There's so much cool stuff in here um, that it's going to take me a while to get through it all. So uh, that's that's something. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about that little box of some hardware in here. Um, you know, it might just be. The, I'm going to guess 1.2 megabyte floppy drive here because um, I associate green LEDs with a 1.2 meg drive. I, uh, I mean, there's obviously no rule that states has to go one way or another. It just seems like it's always like that. Um, oh, manual for a Star NX10. I looked all around for this printer. It wasn't there. I did buy two other printers. Um, one of them I don't think has made it here yet. The other one has, and it is a Cal Abco um, Legend 8. 80, which um, I thought was just some like off-brand weird printer that just like just made by one company and not supported ever again, but it turns out it's probably a uh, McNally? I forget what it was. It's a weird, a different weird brand that I've never really heard of, but yeah. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's over here uh, way back in the corner, so uh, yeah, I I'm a, I want to do a video on it at some point because it's it's, it's kind of cool. It's got a feature that I've never seen before, and I want to talk about that. But uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff to look at. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up so we can put all of the manuals on the bookshelves um, because I definitely need to do that. Uh, most of the other stuff here was just grunt work, like a uh, tray that you put a computer on with the keyboard drawer. It's a bunch of that stuff. Uh, another spool. I forget what this one is. Oh, that's Cat5E uh, e there. Or is it just Cat5? I don't remember. It's another school. Um, a couple of laptop bags. But yeah, it's just, uh, it was a really heavy uh, load. All the jewel case <laughs> games there. That's not even all the ones I have. Um, way too many loose games. But I like doing that um, because, you know, I have a bunch of box games here as well. But it, I don't want to have to open the boxes all the time. So if I see an opportunity to get a cheap loose copy like a Goodwill or something, then I pick it up just so I don't have to open the boxes and put wear on those. But anyway, uh, let's get all of that up onto the bookshelves now. So I think we're ready to start adding everything to here. Um, I wish I had like a plan <laughs> for like, oh, computer software goes here, uh, magazines go here. But right now I'm not even 100% sure what all is in there. So I'm just gonna start pulling stuff out and putting it on here and I'm gonna kind of organize it as I go. So uh, you're just gonna see that whole process go by really quick. And then I'll talk about what actually got put where and how I decided to organize it. Cause like I have the HP stuff here, but then there's a TI thing and that's the only TI thing I think I own. Um, so yeah, I need to make sure that everything has a sensible place. I can't even make it past the first box of stuff without this being awesome. Terrace 80 Radio Shack software library and inside it has a price list for every single thing on the Terrace 80, like, a 4K level one basic was $5.99. A 16K level two basic was $9.88. <laughs> so cool. Oh man. Your first disk drive with, which includes DOS and a cable is $4.99. Disk drives two, three, and four is um, also gonna cost you $4.99. Hmm, uh, that's, that's not a, like a bargain there. <laughs> wow. Oh, printers, ouch. Line printer, friction feed, $1,300. Oh my gosh. Tractor feed, 16. Ugh. Oh, this is, this is so cool. <laughs> oh, I look forward to referencing that in future videos. Wow. I'm not a tremendous fan of these, but metal shelf dividers. So I can actually uh, set these things up so that I can put like, just these Radio Shack catalogs in one place. Although uh, these have a kind of, yeah, cause they flop over like that. These are kind of harsh on stuff. So you can end up with a lot of shelfware 
Um, so I don't want to use these a lot, but they will make sense in some applications for these things. So I'm gonna keep these in mind, but I do have those. Back to manuals. Ah, there's the Model 1 manual. It's a binder, that's why I couldn't find it. Model 1 DOS manual. Oh, <laughs> why couldn't I got the Model 2? A compiler, oh. Model 4 DOS. Okay, I'll have to make do with a Model 1 assembler. That's something. <laughs> This is a manual update for CompuServe. This has printed listings of user groups. Oh. <laughs> this is incredible. Oh, super utility. I'm pretty sure that's one of the favored programs for uh, duplicating disks on Terra Sadies. So that's... That's cool. Physical copy of LDOS. <laughs> oh, RS2, sweet. The RS232 board uh, manual. It's been, the binding's been cut so it could be put in here. That kind of sucks. There we go, LDOS. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh, yes, okay. These are a bunch of newsletter and magazines for TRS-80 Radio Shack stuff. <sighs> this is so cool. This is definitely going on that shelf though. Okay, so this was one thing. This is a photocopy of the editor assembler manual for the Model 2. Now, there were a lot of uh, photocopied manuals, all right? Um, and I didn't take a lot of them uh, because they were photocopies and that doesn't, I, I just didn't want that because there were, there were so many and there were so much. Um, so I left those, but I did take that one because I felt like it was worthwhile to get. Um, but yeah, I do, I almost wish I'd got more of them, but I just, there was so much there. Um, and now that I'm looking at this top edge, this was either slightly moldy or actually, you know what? I think the photocopier, the toner drum. Yeah, okay, yeah, the toner drum was just gross. <laughs> That's what it was. Uh, so yeah. All right. And then stray Galaxian manual. I don't know, just right there, sure. Uh, that's it for that box, it's empty now. Uh, there were a couple of stragglers in that softer box I'm gonna go grab and then this will be finished. This is that uh, Model 4 or Model 3 one emulator. I don't think it should go there, but I don't really have a better place for it. So hardware manuals, I'm gonna need to decide on a location for that. Um, I don't know, I was kind of leaning towards over here, but that was for the technical equipment. This really shouldn't go there in here, but I know, I'll know i know where that is for right now. Um, and then there's a couple of Atari manuals. Um, oh my gosh, a 1010 would be so incredible, but uh, yeah, those aren't super common. Um, <laughs> I was actually pretty excited to get this, a Televideo 910 manual. So the TRS-80 DT1 I have, this is the uh, method that I use to emulate with it the most. And I've actually had to look up this thing's manual so many times. So actually having the actual manual for it, even though I don't have one of these, I would really like to get one, but even though I don't have one of these right now, it's still useful to me. <laughs> so it's just kind of funny that I'm actually gonna get use out of that because I've downloaded the PDF and read it so many times as someone else's scan. So <laughs> it's just kind of funny. Uh, this, I don't, oh, this is something for CompuServe, the access program for the CompuServe information service. I don't actually know what this is, but I do know that this was here. The disc, well, oh, there is a disc. But I guess I'll just put these here. I don't know. I want, I want to have like software. Like this is software in one location, but the software location should be other bookshelves. But these types of things are much rarer than like the PC games I'm gonna have. So I feel like they should go somewhere else. 
but I, I don't know. I'll figure it out as this fills in more. That didn't put as much stuff in here as I was concerned it would, so there's still plenty of space to grow into here. So that's nice. Um, so for now, I guess I'll just go with that. Uh, there was another, I don't really, really want to have like, these would be the pack-in advertisements for games when you'd buy them. Like this would probably come with California games or something. And I don't really want to have a bunch of these in here because there would have been, it, they, they'll get orphaned from the boxes and probably put with the floppy disks. And there's gonna be tons of them. I mean, so, so this should go somewhere. It shouldn't get discarded because it's lasted this long, but it doesn't really deserve to be up in here. But for now, I'll just put it there because the shelf's mostly empty still. So yeah, okay, uh, I think that's it for that box. Let me peek around and see what can be done next. Okay, I think I'm gonna call it for this uh, day of filming here, not this episode, because this uh, did really good and actually emptied that whole box. Um, I'm still real limited here in what I can do with all of these. Um, that one, I, I don't know what I wanna do with yet. <laughs> it's just a box of discs, but uh, that box is empty now. Oh yeah, the manual stuff came in another deck box. Um, so I have two of those, no decks though. The only deck thing I own is actually a disc pack, uh, kind of like with the uh, Diablo drives. But I think I'm going to uh, resume filming on whatever the next day I start on this. Because, um, I mean, I, I got a bunch of stuff in here, but really, at this point, I am just bringing bulk stuff in here. That's that's what I need to do. So things like these milk crates, I mean, like, this isn't even interesting stuff. There's nothing really to go through. This box actually is interesting. So, uh, this is all of my audio and uh, KVM stuff uh, from my vintage computer table, like SC55, MT32. Um, that'll be set up later because I don't know exactly how I want to do that yet. So uh, I'm not ready to do that. And kind of like I was saying earlier with these, actually, I may have edited that part out. I'm not setting these up yet because I want to uh, get more done. Um, there's nothing big going that direction until I get the mini fridge. And even then, I can carry that over those. So. They can stay right there for now. Um, so I will catch up with you whenever I resume filming again. And for right now, I'm actually going to get started on hard copy stuff because I've been putting that off for too long and I do need to get to that. This is actually kind of fun. <laughs> okay, continuing on to the next day, my objective is to get the server rack in the van. Now, this is problematic for a few reasons. I've never lifted the server rack, ever. I've always just tipped it into the van and slid it along the ledges, so I'm really not sure to expect how heavy this thing to be for pulling it up the stairs. So I'm a little concerned about that. I have all the servers and stuff out. There's a network switch in there and then a power switcher thing, which I may just leave connected because I forgot to bring tools, but I have Allen keys so I can take off the side panels, I'm hoping, which are gonna be adding a lot of weight. I may be able to and have to remove the top here as well, but I don't think that panel is gonna be that much weight. So I'm not as concerned about it. But definitely the front and rear door is not going to take off any of the rails because they're not that heavy. I mean, they definitely have weight, but I don't know. I'll find out. So I'm going to try and disassemble this as much as I can right now before I put any of this in and then move it on the hand truck two wheeler thing and see how bad it's going to be because uh, that's what I'm really concerned about. Okay, I can tell this is going to be fine because Without the panels, it's very much lighter, to the point where I can deadlift it. So, I know I'm going to be able to get it up the stairs with the hand truck. Not a problem, don't even have to take off the top. Just the side panels is enough. Okay, everything is in. I have an anti-slip mat interleaved between the servers, so they really can't move. The whole thing is actually gonna slide more than individual ones on top of each other, so that'll probably be fine. Uh, there's not a whole lot of places for them to go. Rack is in there, the window in the back is guarded against it sliding. It shouldn't though, it's really dug into there because the stupid hinges are proud on the edge of this, so they're gonna dig in. Um, but yeah, looks like everything is good and I should be able to get it up there. 
O2 sensor code went away on its own. Sweet. Uh, all right. Frankly, that was nothing. That really wasn't that difficult. That stupid giant bookshelf I bought weighs more than that does, like that. So, yeah, not a problem at all. Uh, now I just gotta bring up all the bits that go in it. Um, and well, that'll be today's objective pretty much done. I am not even going to attempt to set anything up here because I don't really use any of that stuff. Uh, I just need it out of there. Um, and eventually some stuff's gonna go in there. What I really want to use that for in this location at some point is a secondary redundant server with lots of storage. And I don't have a case in there that can do that right now. So I'm gonna have to get another one. And then I would like to get or remake my 3D printer into a new one that can be rack mounted um, with 2020 extruded aluminum because that just seems like the way to go because it's so fragile with it being acrylic and then once it is 2020 it might as well just rack mount so either inside or maybe just on top I don't know but I really like it to go inside the rack um, that way it can hold the heat in because it's beneficial for a 3D printer and then if I'm running a server Reusing that heat is also beneficial. So I don't know, I would like to do that. But uh, next up, time to get all the stuff. I'm not sure that I'm actually gonna put all the servers in it because I'm probably gonna move it. Well, I'm definitely gonna move it because I have a wood panel that I wanna put under the floor. And uh, yeah, so I guess I'm just gonna move stuff. The wood panel is part of the floorboards I have on the van, in the van right now when I'm putting the stuff on it. Uh, so I don't have access to that yet. So I can't really set this fully up right now, but I can bring everything in and just get it ready. All right, there we go. Server stuff in the office. <laughs> uh, this is interesting, this thing. So first off, I didn't know Scepter uh, used to make, or maybe still makes, uh, like server grade equipment. But this thing is a monitor that you may have seen, a console actually, uh, in one of my very old server videos. This stopped working, I don't know why. Um, I want to investigate its internal power supply see if uh, I can fix it. But that's not like even close to the only thing like that because uh, I also have this oh, big old Belkin KVM uh, that also stopped working. Or was it just that because it was connected to, I don't know, I think they both died at like the same time actually. So I got like a bunch of stuff that's just floating around here that I don't want to work on. Uh, there's that. The Blonder Tongue has a bad power supply that needs to be diagnosed and repaired um so there was something else of mine oh i have a 4k monitor um that i bought at goodwill that the power supply is failing on so that's something else that i want to fix but all that stuff needs the workbench right there and i can't get to the workbench until everything is out of the storage unit so that's what i'm working on i want that next <laughs> like this is one side to the workbench this is the back rail i have the tabletop ready to go it's at my house just sitting on the back patio just needs to be drug here but well actually now that there's space i can put it there but yeah so i got a bunch of stuff that i still need to do and then a lot of things that i want to do with it once i get it here so yeah uh, i'm not spoiled or i'm not short of activities to do it's just i can't get it done yet um that's just one aspect obviously i have the whole dark area over there that set up the film like uh more typical videos but i don't want to focus on that yet because there's still too much to do and i want to get that storage unit empty as much as possible but i think i'm probably going to call it there like i mentioned i don't want to put the server rack together yet because i got to decide how i do that still um i mean obviously all the panels and stuff are just going on back normally um it's not that complicated for that uh what about one thing so this is a shark rack brand uh rack here the fasteners that hold the rack on here are actually retained and then they just stay there so that's actually kind of nice the uh whole panel there is reversible as well well i guess more like that uh, so it won't matter which orientation i put it on in and then it's uh well the only downside is it doesn't actually sit on anything on the bottom as far as i can tell so when i put it on i have to hold it up with one hand and then screw it in with the other so that kind of sucks but uh, that's about the only downside. So actually, I would kind of endorse Shark Rack Racks. That's really nice. Uh, I did get that at Goodwill. Um, so it's not like this is sponsored by them or anything. So don't get that in your head. But I like that rack quite a lot. But this is actually the next day. And I'm including this into the uh, previous vlog because 
as I was at home thinking about these servers that I brought in here, I was realizing these are Pentium 4 era Xeons. And that uh, while at first I was just thinking, yeah, they're, they're kind of old servers, I haven't seen a lot that are older. And I was thinking about it, like, what was the first generation of server? Uh, and uh, I was doing some research, and it's looking like it's probably 1993 with Pentium Pros, and that's kind of interesting. Uh, and I was just wondering what you guys thought. Like, what is the first server? Would it be something like my data generals? Because those are a mainframe. Theoretically, someone could have dialed into that. But... I feel like servers are microcomputers with lots of storage, so I don't know. I'm just curious about that. No matter what, though, I now want a Pentium Pro Compact Pro Line because they're kind of awesome. I mean, it's a beige server. You know what? Now that I think about it, might actually be the era that this is from because <laughs> that's a compact keyboard and it's all beige. Uh, this isn't a compact product for sure. Um, Oh, and I didn't tie it in together here. The Scepter monitor here, that's actually the same brand as the 4K monitor I need to repair, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, so that was just a thought. But I definitely want a beige compact Perliant now, which is not going to be easy to get because they're ancient and heavy and going to cost a lot to ship. So I'm probably going to hold out for a while trying to find one. So, uh, But yeah, I do think that is it for the moment. I got a bunch of other stuff to get through. I have uh, started making it a routine to go pick up my mail every time I make a trip here because uh, that gives me a short drive to make sure that everything I put in the van is not going to like collapse over or if it does I can then sort it out at my post office because they're fairly close to my post office and storage unit. Uh, but yeah, uh, that means that I'm picking up my mail more regularly. I got another package today. It's a like normal mail package though so it's going to wait until I do a mail video which I do need to do sometime. Um, but for now, I'm actually going to get back to the hard copy stuff. I started working on that yesterday. I have a bunch of envelopes, address, and ready to go. This is one month's worth of physical copies. Uh, so that is, it's, it's going to consume a lot of resources. I hadn't really planned on that. Well, I kind of knew that that was going to happen, but uh, it's more tangible now. So uh, anyway, that's uh, it for this office vlog, I think. Uh, on the next one, I will be, oh, the next one's gonna be a lot of heavy lifting. Uh, in the storage unit, I have the two shelves that are gonna go here, I believe. And I'm hoping they'll fit next to the server rack. I actually want the server rack on that side, I think. Well, the network thing's right there. Maybe right there then. Um, I'll figure it out. It doesn't really make a difference to me which side it's on. AC vents over there. Uh, I don't know. Well, actually, this side. Yeah, because if the AC vents right there, that means that that area is crowded for cabling. And I won't want to, like, run cables down because I, like, as I mentioned, I have a, well, I actually have a bunch of network switches. This is the Quanta network switch up here that I did a video on. It's dead. I don't remember what happened, but it just completely died. Uh, this one is a... I guess it's a Cisco. I didn't realize that, but it's a dumb unmanaged switch, but I think it's only a gigabit um, Or is it just megabit or 100 megabit? No, it is gig um, Are these the only gigs 10 base? No, I think it's 100 meg <laughs> Yeah, that's so there's a reason I stopped using it. I think it's because it's 100 meg and unbelievably loud um, so I don't have a, another better one and then the only other one i have i don't know if you'll be able to barely see it up in there yeah there's a netgear one it's like uh 16 or 24 port it's not a lot uh unmanaged and my plan is to just take probably i mean i can't honestly i could remove that whole panel or just make a replacement that's really short oh man I, that tiny little square look at that that's perfect I could totally just remove this and run network cables down it. Oh, maybe it's going in this corner. <laughs> that would be pretty sweet. I didn't see that the first time. Okay, so even though the AC vent's going to crowd it, that would mean that I don't have to damage one of the floor or the drop ceiling tiles then replace it or buy my own and cut it. Oh, I like that. That's, yeah, that, that'll work. Um... Then I can just make like a collar or a, a vent, uh, no, a, uh, 
there's a term. It's like a bushing, but for cables. I don't I don't know what it's called, but uh, usually I see them as like two brushes that are facing into each other. Maybe get something like that to put over that. That would look really sweet, slick. Wouldn't draw any attention. So, all right, that's a plan. I was thinking I might not want it on this wall because that'll introduce noise in this area, but it's, I'm not gonna be filming in this space. This is too tiny. I mean, this is like as big as I used to film in, but so calling it tiny is a, <laughs> it feels wrong, but <laughs> compared to the other rooms in here, it really is. So anyway, that's enough uh, growing on. Uh, I'm looking forward. This, this is all so great. So, all right. Thank you all for not only watching, but making this possible. Uh, if you want to support the channel, there are a number of links down in the description that you can uh, look at to do that. Becoming a patron is one of the best ways you can do that. Uh, but that is it for the moment, and I will see you next time.